Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I'm going to show you how to take a very classic quilt pattern. It's called the brick pattern or also brick layer and you're going to put it into a table runner. Another great thing about it is we're going to make it really easy for you because all you need to do is buy a jelly roll and I'll show you in a moment what that jelly roll is. So this is what it looks like using the jelly roll and you can see each of the strips are staggered. Now if you don't have access to a jelly roll you can get them at Joann's and Walmart and fabric websites. Here it is using scrap fabrics. Now this is scrap fabrics that I had in a big tub and I just pulled out fabrics that kind of work well together and it turned out just beautiful. So you can do it either way you want. Now let's get started on this table runner. If you're not familiar with what a jelly roll is, this is it right here. And there are 20 strips in here of about four different patterns and they're all coordinated colors together. So the manufacturers pick fabrics that work well together. They cut them into two and a half inch wide strips approximately 42 inches long. Now you can buy these at Joann Fabrics and Crafts. You can buy some on Amazon and other internet fabric stores. Another good place to buy them where I like to buy mine is at Walmart. Not all Walmarts sell fabric and crafts but if you're lucky enough to have one there they're about half the price. All right, when you unroll it, you'll notice that the one end here is kind of wrinkled up. So I recommend before you begin cutting into your strips that you press them out. The table runner that I'm making is the finish size is about 14 inches wide by 60 inches long. Now you can make it bigger. You can make it as long as you want. I'm going to need to cut about 60 pieces for this 60 inch table runner. But out of this jelly roll, you can get up to about 100 pieces. So you can make it longer if you want. To speed up the cutting process, I've layered a couple of jelly roll strips in two different rows because it's just going to make the cutting go really fast. So I'm going to first straighten this end out along here. Cut the ends off. So there you go. So cut those off. Now you're going to move over eight inches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And place your ruler on a line so you keep everything straight. Don't move your fabric. Move your ruler eight, eight inches again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And cut. Now, this is not quite eight inches here, but unfold them, stack them so that this doesn't go to waste, and then cut them eight inches long. Now that you have all of your pieces cut out, you want to lay them out in seven different rows and randomly place them. You don't want to have two of the same right next to each other. And in every other row, you're going to have a different number. So in this first row, I have eight pieces. Second row, nine. Eight, nine, eight, nine, Eight. It's very important every other row is different. Well then next you want to stitch them together, bring front sides together and stitch one quarter inch seam and then you'll bring the next one and stitch it on. So go down this first row there stitching all your pieces together. Then continue to the next row stitching them together. Once you've got all of the pieces stitched together in each row, make sure you press your seams so everything is nice and flat on the front side. And it doesn't matter 
which direction your seams are going in. It's what, what's really nice about this brick pattern. Now you want to take the rows that have nine pieces in them and pull them out like this to where this seam is in the middle of this piece here. Then you go to the next one that has nine and pull it out and you're doing the same thing. So you're creating this uh, alignment of your seams right here. And then here's the last row of nine. So once you have that done, now you want to take the first two rows and stitch them together. So bring this one on top and you want to make sure, again, that this seam is in the middle of this. Go ahead and place pins to hold your two rows together. So pin it all the way down, then stitch one quarter inch seam all the way down. Once you've got that one done, then you're going to go to this next row. Bring it in and place it down. Now when you place that one down, you want to make sure that this one here, this seam here, is in the same place where this seam is. So you line that up. Pin this row together and stitch one quarter inch seam. And then continue stitching all of your rows together. After you've stitched all the rows together, then make sure you press the seams on the back side. And I've pressed the seams that hold the rows together. I've just pressed them all in one direction. Then after you've finished your pressing, then you want to trim these little tails off. And you're going to trim them even with the uh, edges that are the shorter edges. So place your ruler right along here and try to get everything nice and straight. You want to cut this row, or this side I should say, very straight and cut. Then go to the opposite end and cut that edge straight also. To cut the fabric for the back of the table runner and your binding, you want to fold your fabric together like this with your selvage edges together. Fold it like it was off of the bolt of fabric when you purchased it. Then you're going to cut this edge straight. Then move over 16 and a half inches and cut. Move over again 16 and a half inches and cut. And when you're doing all your cutting, try not to move your fabric. Just leave it right where it is. Then to cut your binding strips, if you're using the same fabric, you're going to cut out four. Just continue moving the ruler over two and a half inches until you have your four strips cut. Then make sure you trim your selvage edges off when you are done. Take the two pieces that are for the back of the table runner and bring front sides together. And you're going to stitch the two ends together and stitch about a half inch seam all along here. Then press the seam on the back and then open up that seam. Let me get this open here. Here we go. Open up your seam and press it open also. Now layer your fabric. So place the fabric for the back with the pretty side facing down against your table. Then place the cotton batting on top of that. Then take your top piece and lay it with the pretty side up. Now I purposely left my fabric for the back and the cotton batting wider than what's on top because we're going to be doing some really easy quilting stitches and when you're doing quilting stitches sometimes your fabric on top stretches. So this gives you that little extra coverage that you might need. Later we will trim all of that off. So make sure all of your fabric layers are nice and smooth. There's no little ripples in it at all. Then I recommend placing some straight pins, you don't need a lot, all the way down. I put a row near one side, then I'll put another row of pins maybe going down the center. And like I said, they don't need to be real close together. And then I'll put another row of pins 
going over towards this other side. And this will keep all of your fabric aligned. So you want to continue pinning all the way down. Then the stitch that I recommend you do is called stitch in the ditch. So you're just going to start at one end and you're going to stitch where the two rows of fabric come together. You're going to stitch right in this seam. And I recommend you lengthen your stitch to about 3.0. This way it won't pucker all of the fabric up. So go ahead and stitch down each seam that connect the rows together. Once you've done all of your quilting stitches, then you want to go in and trim your other two layers of fabric, the fabric from the back and the cotton batting. You want to trim it even with your table runner top piece. So you'll just line your ruler up and go ahead and go and cut all four edges even with the top of the table runner. Stitch the binding strips together and make sure you do cut your selvage edges off before you do that. And stitch them together doing a one quarter inch seam. Then press the seam open. Then fold this long strip in half like this, folding raw edge to raw edge, and press it the full length. Next step is to put the binding on. So have the back side of your table runner facing up. Take the end of the binding and come down from this side edge here, come over about 10 to 12 inches. Place the end of the binding right there and you're bringing the raw edge of the binding up against the raw edge of the table runner. Just put a pin there to hold it in place. Then come down about six or seven inches and this is where you're going to start stitching. Now you can pin this binding down if you like or if, as long as you're good at holding it up against the edge while you stitch, you can do that also. So you're going to stitch from this point a quarter inch seam and you're going to stitch all the way down to the next corner. Now, once you get a quarter of an inch from this edge here, you're going to stop stitching, then take it out of your machine. Take your binding strip and fold it out this way to where this edge of the binding is along this edge of the table runner. And you'll see this little diagonal fold right there. Place your thumb or finger there, pull it back to where the binding is now going alongside of this edge. And I would just put a pin there to hold this little fold. Then go back to your sewing machine and stitch one quarter inch seam all along this edge. And every time you come to a corner, fold it like this. Once you get back to where you started, you want to stop about, oh, 10 inches from where that end of the binding was where you started. Take the two ends and overlap them. Then cut about a quarter of an inch overhang. So you're going to have one a quarter inch longer than the other. Then bring the two ends together, stitch a quarter of an inch seam, finger press this open, then fold it in half and finish stitching the binding down. Have the front side of the table runner facing up now. Now take the edge of the binding and fold it over to the front. Make sure you bring this folded edge past this stitch line here. And I'm going to show you a really easy way to fold the binding around your corners. So once you've got it pinned on each side of the corner, you've got this little bump here. Take another straight pin and press down push off to the side, fold this over, and pin. So do all of your corners like that. Then when you go to stitch the binding down, you're going to stitch along this edge all the way around all four sides. Well, here it is. It's all done. This is really is an easy table runner. It's something you can easily make 
in a day. And it's very economical whether you use scraps or buy your jelly rolls. And again, check out Walmart, especially if your Walmart sells fabric. I hope you learned something new in this tutorial and I hope you also try making this. I think you'll really enjoy it. If you're interested in other Table Runner tutorials, check below your YouTube screen for the video links. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Thanks for watching. See you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button. Don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to click on the bell and enter your email address so you receive email notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl and this is a lot of manis. See you next time and happy sewing!